What is up, Bat Family? Welcome to a brand new video, and today we're diving into what we know about the Batman Arkham series spin-off so far, that is. And interestingly as well, just how I think it could work. So obviously, we're going to break down the things of substance of what we know so far about that spin-off, you know, when it's likely going to be set, because there's actual pieces of evidence that really indicate the setting, who could be involved, very interestingly as well. And just as I said, most interestingly to me, the somewhat vision I, I have and I feel like a way the show could go, and even if it doesn't go that way, obviously, if, if which isn't remotely guaranteed, just things that I think are very, very likely to be seen explored within the episodes that we're going to get. So it's crazy to say, everyone, but the Batman has been out for a little while now, and so opens a new Bat-verse, if you will, as what is being described as, you know, whether that's the Reeves-verse, the Bat-verse, not only have we got more movies coming, we've got HBO Max spin-off shows that are set within that same world. And we've known for the longest time now, long before the film's release, that we would be getting these HBO Max spin-off shows, of which I believe we first learned at that very special DC fandom way back in 2020 when we first got Reeves coming on stage. You know, we got the, the 25 to 35 percent shot like version sizzle reel of the Batman trailer. Oh man, take me back to those times. That that was that was good. But we're gonna have that again at some point with the Batman 2, and that's just gonna be crazy. But I digress. Getting too caught up in the hype of that time, and, and you can't blame me. It was pretty nuts. This lineup of HBO Max spin-off shows originally included the GCPD series that you probably heard of by now. And then we learned not too long after whispers of a penguin series, with even rumors of a Catwoman show, of which has also even been acknowledged by Reeves that there were whispers of other shows being talked about, but it depends on how at the time he mentioned how the movie's received. He was saying things like this with regards to sequels. It's just like, let's just concentrate on this for now. The reason why I mention all of that is because that leads up to the point of when the GCPD series was no longer happening. And we learned that he had since evolved into an Arkham show. Now, Reeves has also said and explained in other ways that it's been put on hold, but it has also been explained that it evolved. It evolved into this Arkham show. So as of right now, these are indeed the two shows within Universe Canonical that we are getting. Now, another very interesting factor, and this is one of the most interesting parts of the video, I guess you could say, because it splinters off into what we're going to discuss a little bit later down the line. When it comes to a bit of the backstory and how the Arkham series came to be, Reeves said to the Cyber Nerds that the GCPD thing, that story, has kind of evolved. We're actually now moving more into the realm of exactly what would happen in the world of Arkham as it relates coming off of our movie and some of the characters, again, in their origins that you would almost leaning into the idea of it's like a horror movie or a haunted house that is Arkham. The idea of, again, the way that Gotham is a character in the movie, I really want Arkham to exist as a character so that you go into this environment and encounter these characters in a way that feels really fresh. And so in our work on Gotham, that story started to evolve and it started feeling, wait, we, we should really lean into this. And that's kind of where that's gone. Now that's quite a, a really decent breakdown of, of how it not only came to be, what they could explore, and also gives clues as to exactly where it could be set, even though there is still a little bit of debate with that, but that's what I want to now run over because obviously when looking into how this Arkham series could go, we need to take into account the timeline of things. So we don't know for an absolute certainty, like I couldn't guarantee you, when the Arkham series spin-off will be set, but Reeves's words do suggest that the show could be set after the events that took place in The Batman, due to him saying, what would happen in the world of Arkham as it relates coming off of our movie. For now, for argument's sake and what we're going to get into in this video, even though I will offer the other side, it is fairly safe to assume that we would be exploring episodes that are set after when Edward Nashton, the Riddler, 
gets locked up. Even though I totally wouldn't rule out or discount any kind of somewhat Arkham history lesson depicted in one of, if not the first episode, to somewhat set up how it's potentially always had that horror movie characteristic about it in both past and present. And also, just the way that Matt Reeves chooses the words after what I just read out in saying that as it relates coming off of our movie, and some of the characters, again, in their origins, almost leaning into the idea of it's like a horror movie or a haunted house that is Arkham. So not only do you say coming off of our movie, but they, some characters, and again, in their origins, it's like making me think, hmm, hmm. There is even further evidence that seems to suggest that it could indeed be set after the Batman. Some of the evidence when Matt Reeves was talking about Barry Keoghan's Joker and a bit of his backstory to Variety, discussing how he had this smile that people stared at and found grotesque and terrifying. Even as a child, people looked at him with horror and his response was to say, okay, so a joke was played on me and this was his nihilistic take on the world. But then, to get to the, the most interesting part for what we're discussing, he commented on the Arkham series in the same conversation with Variety. When he was asked if the Clown Prince of Crime could return in the future, Matt Reeves went on to say that there's stuff I'm very interested in doing in an Arkham space, potentially for HBO Max. Now, he was saying this before, like, it was kind of obvious and, and it was being spoken about that the GCPD series had evolved into the Arkham series. So this is when the movie came out. Everyone was talking about articles were being written about Barry Keoghan's Joker at the end scene that was in the movie. He was being asked about that again before it was very kind of public that Matt Reeves had been speaking about we are doing an Arkham series. So that's important to bear in mind here. But to get back to it, he says there's stuff that I'm very interested in doing in an Arkham space, potentially for HBO Max. There are things that we've talked about there, so it's very possible, it also isn't impossible that there is some story that comes back where Joker comes into our world. So if you ask me, I, all I'm gonna say here is, and, and I don't like to get ahead of myself, I really don't, but you know, just analyzing this and how we know Joker is in Arkham and was in Arkham before the events of the movie. That's something we will be talking about. I'm not sure as to why he would mention this stuff he's interested in doing in an Arkham space and how it's not impossible that the story could come back to where Joker comes into our world in the same sentence unless the series wouldn't be set after the Batman or even have potential scenes of Barry Keoghan's Joker within it. But when it comes to Barry Keoghan's Joker, it can be explored both before and after within the Arkham series. Um, and that's one of the leading things that I think needs to be discussed with you guys down in the comments. But before we get into that theory and how it could branch a potential prequel, let's talk about one of the focal points of this Arkham series and how I think this show could flesh out its episodes in a way that's just really fascinating to me. Like if I was pitching this, I would just think, hey, how about this? How about if we tackle it like this? And one of the fascinating things, just going along for argument's sake, if it was set off, after the Batman in the way that the Penguin series is, is that we are early in Batman's vigilante career, like literally year two. He's now around one year, six months in. Already has the Riddler locked away in Arkham. He has the Joker locked up in Arkham State Hospital, albeit that Barry Keoghan's Joker, similar to Selina Kyle in the Batman, doesn't have that of the crowning name of the Joker yet, doesn't have the moniker. But I digress. The, the point is, Arkham, whether you know it from the source material or not, I think everyone knows isn't exactly the most sound place. Not at all. Despite it being an asylum, an Arkham State Hospital, if you will, as seen on those Arkham jumpsuits for the criminally insane, if anything, it worsens the inmates' conditions and further delves them into their, their countdown of breaking out back into Gotham, which is going to happen with Keoghan's Joker at some point, same with the Riddler, whether we see it in these movies or not. But all of this is a thing that I just can't wait. Like, I'm not going to get my expectations too high because who knows how they're going to adapt it. But again, with that focal point of the inmates and how it can be explored, this is a thing that can be focused on in the Arkham series. And I've always had an idea in my head when we first heard news about an Arkham series or an Arkham spinoff is that of this somewhat anthology-esque 
episodic nature to this show. Just due to a vast potential that the Arkham series has. Of course, again, I just want to stress it, it does not have to go this way and it can follow a set of characters progressing a plot every episode within Arkham. But a way that I can really envision is a decent way to get into the grit is to tell a story across all of the episodes that would follow the perspective of several different characters, of which perhaps at a certain point in the season, the plots of these characters would perhaps eventually interconnect. Now, don't get me wrong, what I'm about to say isn't remotely really all well thought out, but just to give you an example of how episodes could potentially unfold and how each anthology-esque kind of episode, and all I mean by that is just following a different character and then another character in another episode and then another one in another episode and then eventually, as I said, maybe it interconnects to this larger plot is that, for example, we could have, as I was mentioning earlier, in episode one, perhaps we follow an inmate having a review or an interview or something like that when being committed to Arkham State Hospital or perhaps just following the person conducting the review. And this could offer a slight delve into that of Arkham's past, as I was also mentioning earlier, narrated in an interview from a psychologist. Now, insert character here if you want that psychologist to be someone prolific to that of Batman fans or not. You name who you want there for now. It doesn't have to be anyone particularly special. The point is that this episode the beginning episode could perhaps set up the story and a bit of the world building of Arkham in a bit more detail than that of what we saw the Riddler present with that scene exposing the Waynes and Martha being dragged back into Arkham State Hospital at the time. It could also present some severe clinical negligence, if you will, with perhaps just how lousy this person is at their job. So this is the very beginning aspects of where you start to realize, okay, Arkham is a bit sloppy, but as the episodes unfold and as you get different perspectives from the characters, you're only peeling back the horrific haunted house that is Arkham aspect bit by bit by bit. Ultimately, this first episode could just more or less set up that bone structure and a feel for the beginning threads that make up the fabric of what the Arkham series is to come. But then, perhaps in the next episode, maybe we follow a worker at Arkham who isn't a psychologist or anything particularly high up at all, but perhaps maybe a cleaner, somebody who nobody really thinks twice to look at, but is involved in seeing some of the most horrific sights at Arkham with their time spent working there. I'm sure that can be left to imagination, but maybe some messes caused by the inmates, the, the violence, potential wrongdoings from that of the higher ups. All of this could be really fascinating to watch as a viewer to just further details the horrors of Arkham from that of the perspective of even just your ordinary worker there. Things that you, you aren't always seen by let's just say Batman who happens to come in at a certain point in time. I mean, for example, along that scene with the Riddler and Barry Keoghan's Joker, we saw that security guard in that little security room right next to the inmate doors. Um, so it could follow someone like him. But whether you want to think about him or an everyday kind of worker like a cleaner, you could then get into where one of those characters in episode two starts to witness another character using patients for experiments, perhaps. Again, this is only around the beginning, episode two-ish, but as I said earlier, towards the end of the season, you can see how the plot could all interconnect. But let's just say the, the character from this episode's perspective, the cleaner, does witness something like that. This could be a part of the plot in where you realize that Arkham isn't exactly a safe space. But there is something much larger and darker with things going on in the plot and at the heart of Arkham. Something that taints its inmates there which is where things could get very messed up. But I only also mentioned that aspect as well because there's been lots of comments that I've read from fan desires for potential Batman rogues gallery characters appearing in the series and how in this early Batman universe that Reeves is setting up, if this was set at Batman year two, that is, or just shortly after the Batman movie at the beginning of Batman year three, various fans have said, oh, what if we saw a, a, an early Hugo Strange or Dr. Jonathan Crane doing their job, but also extra activities for research purposes of which certain people like this cleaner or that security guard might witness. And as we know, Gotham is pretty corrupt down to its people sometimes that they might be paid off or a security guard might be paid to just kind of ignore what could be going on with these larger characters. And again, not every character might 
you know, look past that. We could see the cleaner's perspective, but then the security guard who might turn a blind eye to the larger things going on like that. And that could be explored as episodes keep unfolding. And with regards to those larger characters that could appear in these episodes, I do think it's interesting to know just as seen in how the Penguin series is going to be an HBO Max show that features that very prominent character, Colin Farrell's Penguin, of whom will also be appearing in the future movies. It's very important to note that so can some characters who appear in the Arkham series then bleed into the Batman sequel and, and they're on out. Like, again, Colin Farrell's got his own little HBO Max show. Why can't a bigger character in the Arkham series then come into a future Batman movie? It is definitely possible. Ultimately though, what I will say is you'd have to think we are going to maybe see some familiar faces or at least familiar sounding names within the Arkham series, even if at their very early stages, just like that of Edward Nashian's The Riddler, and maybe even earlier. Although I do think it's incredibly important to temper expectations when coming to anything like that due to where we're at with Robert Pattinson's Batman being very early into his career, albeit the Joker and Riddler already locked up at Arkham, even though Joker isn't quite Joker Joker just yet. I just don't expect to see multiple, multiple, and multiple characters. However, I wouldn't rule out some early stage villains like that of maybe someone like Victor Zaz already being at Arkham as an inmate. I would just be surprised if there were any larger and more prolific Batman's rogues gallery characters like that of Mad Hatter because I expect someone like him to be out there in the world in a similar way to how Edward Nashton was before he got caught. Even though I can't rule out though that they may introduce someone like that already within Arkham and he was just going to have his Batman encounter when he gets out of Arkham. But getting back to the point of the episodes, we've gone over like episode one, two-ish kind of thing, but then how about we follow maybe one of the actual Arkham inmates? And not only just any inmate, one of the larger characters, maybe even that of Barry Keoghan's Joker for an episode. Now it's still very much so up in the air if we're going to see Barry Keoghan appear in the series, but we've already been over the timeline of this in terms of set after the Batman, or even if not, as I keep saying, it could work both ways. This way as well, Barry Keoghan, like having an episode explored, that he doesn't have to be like heavily involved, especially with my rough idea of an anthology-esque episode setting, visiting different characters across the whole kind of living character that is Arkham. You don't have to deal with a series regular situation with that of Barry Keoghan, but maybe just an episode. And that could be a brilliant way of following an inmate within Arkham in general. And one of that of the most twisted inmates ever to enter Arkham Asylum. Especially when you take into account what we went over earlier with what we know so far about the series with Reeves quite literally saying, so it's very possible, it also isn't impossible that there is some story that comes back where Joker comes into our world in the same sentence as discussing this Arkham series in space that they're doing for HBO Max. But then again, if you're going to enter Joker into the Arkham series spin-off, I'm sure a lot of people would also like to argue, just like how the Penguin series bridges a certain gap between the first and the second film, that as I ever mentioned earlier, with the plot connecting at a certain point down the episodes of the Arkham series, perhaps it ends with the plot surrounding Barry Keoghan's Joker's breakout to facilitate his appearance in a future movie. But as for like the further and further episodes, whether you want to bring in this character or that character, this is where I leave it to you down in the comments below. Whether it's through six episodes, eight episodes, 10 or more, even though I think it's likely to be less. Insert your own way of exploring the different halls of Arkham Asylum. But getting to the prequel aspect of this, because I do want to say for argument's sake and play devil's advocate, that it could indeed just like how the GCPD series was, be a prequel, a slight prequel to that of the Batman. Just because the Penguin HBO Max series is going to show the rise of Oz during the, the power vacuum that was set through Falcone's death, doesn't mean that the Arkham series has to be set after the Batman as well, even though I went over earlier, there are ways that are spoken coming off of our movie and things like that that does seem to suggest that it could be. However, I do need to mention that Reeves' Batman put away Barry Keoghan's Joker during Batman Year One. So it isn't impossible for the show to play with that line from Barry Keoghan's Joker that was said to Batman, it's almost our anniversary, isn't it? In that we could explore, literally through the Arkham series, the better part of a year 
that Barry Keoghan's Joker spent in Arkham waiting for that interview to take place in where Batman came and visited him during the events of this film in an effort to get his help in profiling the Riddler. He still spent the better part of a year, three quarters or so of a year, in Arkham. You could literally show the Arkham series spin-off in that time setting. Not a massively, massively proper prequel, but it would still be set. Like, Batman dumps him off. Barry Keoghan's Joker, who isn't even called Joker yet, is within Arkham now. I'm in this space. Hey, how about we explore that time setting before the events of the Batman movie when Riddler starts causing mayhem around Gotham? Sure, you could explore it afterwards and explore how Barry Keoghan's Joker, or like, you know, across several characters, across several episodes, builds up the character that is the dark beating heart of Arkham Asylum and all of its haunted house aspects. You could definitely do that, and even up until a point of where he breaks out. But there is a big gap in time, and where it's almost their anniversary, as of when Batman goes to visit him during the Batman movie, and where he's been sat there around, I don't know, like 10, 11, almost 12 months, and where that could be a very, very, very interesting thing to explore. But it still technically doesn't have to be from his point of view. I think that would be an interesting way to do it, but you could have an episode where, for example, that security guard has consistent interactions all episode long, with Barry Keoghan's Joker during that year of when Batman dropped him off. That could be a way to do it. You don't have to be so in the face with the Joker because that is quite a daring task. Maybe it's more sensible to just have that security guard in that security room. Just have, as I just said, consistent interactions, you know, giving him food, mind games and things like that. That would be an interesting way to explore just the inmate quality of life part of the series. But Bat Family, that's just about so far all we know about the Arkham series and also a way that I just think they could get into it. Let me know what you think of my anthology-esque, hey, different episode, different perspective from a different character, or would you like it to go a different way? Do you think it could be set after the Batman, given what Matt Reeves says, coming off of our movie, and some of their characters, again, in their origins and stuff? Like, do you think that could be set afterwards, or do you think it could be, that quote could be referencing, oh, Batman drops off Barry Keoghan's Joker, and you follow his journey for the next 10 months until Batman sees him again in that interview room? But there's just so much potential for this series that it makes me really, really excited. Arkham, I can definitely see why this series is being developed because Arkham is such a rich space. The, the very ideas I have might be so far from the truth, but I definitely, definitely love the idea of exploring the perspective of a different character. Maybe I didn't even name the best ways you can do that. That's why I love your expansion down in the comments. Don't forget that if you want to stay up to date with anything HBO Max spin-off Arkham series related, as well as the Penguin Show and future The Batman news updates, and even in between bonus videos like this, do subscribe to the channel. Double check if you are subscribed. A lot of you might not realize and you might just be getting recommended these videos but if you've been checking out my content for some time do hit that subscribe button or double check if you are subscribed to make sure you don't miss out on new videos and go ahead and like this video if you did enjoy it that really goes a long way follow me on the links in the description such as twitter instagram and other places like my discord server but thank you so much for watching everyone i hope you all have a lovely rest of your day and i'll see you bat family in the next video goodbye